Journaling with Luke's Gospel, Chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinelius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there was shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day the city of David, a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to, among those who he favours. When the angel had left them and gone into the heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And all who had heard it were amazed at the shepherds, what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel, before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated to, ho to be holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple and went with the parents, brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, of the daughter of Pael, Pael, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow, to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God, and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. 
When they had finished everything required by the law, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up, as usual, to the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at this understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so we just pause for a moment and reflect on the Gospel in silence. And so it is time for journaling. Journaling is a spiritual tool that allows us to reflect not just on the gospel we've heard, but on our own lives. How does the gospel speak to us? How does the gospel touch us, inform us, and shape us in our own lives? How does God talk to us, both in the gospel and in our own lives? I'm about to show you four different questions. I invite you to select one of them and journal for about 10 minutes. These questions will also be in the text comments below. The first question. In Luke chapter 2, waiting is a key part of the story. Mary and Joseph had to wait nine months for the baby to arrive. Simeon and Anna are waiting, whilst the Jewish people had to wait for centuries for their Messiah to save them. And some and some are still waiting. How has waiting been a part of your life? What has waiting taught you? What part of waiting do you struggle with and why? Pause the video. The second question. What can you learn from Anna's devotion to worshiping God in the temple day and night? How can you incorporate more intentional times of worship into your own life? Pause the video. The third question. In Luke chapter 2, 19, it says that Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. After the shepherd's visit, How can you intentionally take time to reflect on and ponder God's word in your own life? Pause the video. And finally, the fourth question. How does Jesus' obedience to his earthly parents model what it means to live a life submitted to God and to authorities' figures? In our own lives, how can you grow in obedience to God and those in authority over you? Please pause the video. And so now we will spend about 10 minutes answering our question by journaling. 